I was in heaven when it was a 90s challenge. Are we kidding? It's like my favorite thing in the whole wide world. So freaking pumped. Anyway, how's it going, guys? Sorry that this episode is late, but I was in New York doing the Roni premiere because I do shit like that now, apparently. <laughs> um, so everything is delayed. I've got many episodes to record even after this. It's just a marathon of catch up. Um, but, you know, if I want to do things like that, I guess I can't always stay on top of the pod. Um, it was for no personal reason. It was it was business. Um and if you are subscribed to the Patreon as a, a grand dame or the moment, and you listen to the Orange County episode, you'll get the behind the scenes scoop that I didn't end up posting all on Instagram. And if you sign up for the Patreon, you also get access to bonus footage or wait, bonus episodes, <laughs> bonus footage. I guess it's bonus footage. Uh, and I'm trying to get two episodes out a month that are a Bravo jam, like old Roni, old Beverly Hills. Uh, and I'm actually sticking to my schedule because I finally got caught up on, on life essentially. So check that out at the link in my description here on this episode. And if you're watching on YouTube, hello, love you guys. Can you please subscribe though, if you're not already? And like this video, please. It does help. And comment so I can say hi. And if you're listening on a podcast, thank you so much for your support. Uh, and a free way to support the show is to leave a five-star rating and review. It helps the algorithm find out that uh, people like this show. And that's it, right? What else am I missing? Oh, uh, support the sponsors. Uh, use the codes, purchase things, visit sites or whatever the whatever the call to action is. It really, really helps the show keep booking more sponsors and um, growing things. I was able to get a nicer camera finally. So, yeah. Okay, now let's start the Project Runway recap. Here at She Speaks Bravo, we believe that Bravo TV is a great form of self-care and therapy. I mean, look at me. I've been using it for over a decade, and I'm a complete mess. What is this, honey? I love that. I'm Emily. Every week, I recap the latest episodes of your favorite Bravo shows, from Housewives to Vanderpump Rules. We need to get more cosmopolitan. Hapini. So if you're not already subscribed, get subscribed and hit that notification bell so you never miss an episode. I love Kato coming correct with Anna the next day. That was some woman shit and I loved it and respect. It really just, um, I don't know, it... It just shows that they're under a lot of pressure. <laughs> they're under a lot of pressure. They still come correct. If she had doubled down and not realized that maybe she went a little too far, then we could talk about it. But she didn't. She realized what she did, and all is good. So Jenny Garth is the guest judge, and she's there because they're doing a 90s theme challenge. And I learned something. I learned that Alicia Silverstone is one of Christian's really good people, like good friends or whatever. I just hope that he didn't design the dress that Alicia Silverstone was wearing because that was a travesty. But Jenny looked great. So I'm guessing that maybe that's the connection there. Or was it really just because of like 90s? 90210? But she looks amazing. And the runway is going to be in the hallways of the first ever public school in New York City, which is super cool. There's two teams. We've got the blue team, which is Laurence, Bishmi, Praje, Kato, and Rami win. And they are going to be inspired by, this was Kato's idea. She thought of music and hip hop, so they are going to be inspired by that, by the music of the 90s. Are you kidding? Yes, I love it. The red team is Kane, Fabio, Carson, Anna, and Brittany. And they are 90s grunge, lace, and plaid. Not as excited about it. It's also a tricky team. You know, L Laurence, Bishmi, Praje, 
and Coteau. Mm, yes, really great. But this is a little bit more of a hodgepodge. They go to Mood, and as soon as Brittany grabbed that pleather, I went, uh-uh, this isn't going to be good. It just looked bad. I mean, how do you make pleather look good, you know? Laurence takes on, though, a super natural leadership role. And she goes around, she's checking in with everyone about their designs. And Coteau is like, yes, she's here for it. It's Laurence is not going around and critiquing. She's just checking in and asking and like provides a little bit of a tweak. Like, what about this? It's not judgy. It's not, I know better than you. It's just really great leadership, honestly. Kane shows Carson at one point his sketch ideas because Carson, it's like she thought she they, she thought that they were all on the same page, but then whatever Kane's doing, she's like, "What?" He shows the sketch, and I swear she doesn't love it, and she's just like, "Cool." I can I can just hear in her voice that she's like, "I don't think this is gonna go well," but it's not my place to tell you that you shouldn't do it. The next day before they go into the workroom, they have like a little breakfast and stuff before. And Kato says that she makes a joke. She's like, I need to, I need to have time to teach all the models a dance. And then she starts kind of joking. And then Bishmi starts dancing. And then Kato joins him. And they are now in an impromptu dance moment. And I am just in love. I'm in love. I love Bishmi so much. I want to cry. It's He's too good. He's, oh my God. I just, I love it. During the walkthrough, Rami talks about how he designed Aaliyah's top and she, she wore some photo and it kind of launched his career and it really puts this perspective, the time frame. I was like, yeah, that would be all the way back then. Isn't that nuts? Like, yeah, this is the 20th season. Hello. Christian goes over to Laurence and is asking about, because um, he was asking everyone, like, what were you like in high school? And what were you like in the 90s? And Laurence tells the epic story of how she says they could have broken me or made me. And she says that she was pregnant at 16. She didn't tell her parents. And they found out two weeks before she was going to give birth, her mom had to rush her to the emergency room. And her dad disowned her like are you kidding and that it's like there it is that's the pain right because she's what they were from west africa and she's like oh you like you didn't but fashion school saved her life she says it was the toughest time in my life but i wouldn't change a thing there's beauty in everything isn't she such a queen that's why, like, even when she was being cold and stuff, I was like, Nina knew. Nina's like, oh, that's kind of just how designers can be. <laughs> they can kind of be assholes. But she's not an asshole. She's really kind. She's just guarded. Carson has taken over as, like, the leader of the red team, which I'm obsessed with because it's so perfect for her. She was a costume designer. I'm sure she's she's the head of the costume team. So it just makes sense. And when she uh, talks about it, she's like, I was the black Madonna at my school. But I also really loved Gwen Stefani. It all made sense. It all made sense. Christian does warn Brittany that her outfit needs to be perfectly sewn. Don't run out of time. Uh, because this is like really tricky fabric. But then he does this bit with the phone, like he's talking to someone and Brittany is giving him life. Like he's doing something that hysterical. He's not really. And honestly, Coteau's done it like a hundred times. Coteau's already done the phone bit. And it's like, I don't know. I'm, I, I'm not loving Christian as much as I want to. I want to love him. I, I he's just, kind of a he's too bitchy with them everything is such a bitchy thing to say so like oh my god as where tim gunn was not like that you just can't you can't replace a tim gunn he's so one of a kind and special kane though isn't even ready and christian is like he keeps christian waiting while he sews a corset but then he starts looking at it and he's like this is costuming uh yeah 
real costumey. Bishmi's looks hot. Like, he puts that thing together in no time. Literally no time. And it looks, it's just hot with the off-the-shoulder jacket with the number on it. So it's got like a Letterman thing and the matching skirt. Ah, my God. It gives to a clueless vibe as well. Like, it's like a throwback to when Cher and Dion had like matching little suit skirts things. Like, it, it's giving that too. It's so good. Brittany is stressing me the fuck out, man. She can't get that pleather to stay down or do what she wants it to do. And she has to hot glue it down. I'm just like, oh, no, I just want you to do well because I think Brittany's cool. But I get, I'm like, this was not the good. It wasn't good. This was not. A, it was not the good fabric choice. Designers. Designers. Summer is here. I'm not a summer girly. I don't like being sweaty. I don't like being smelly. And it was this time of year where I first discovered that you can get body odor all over your body. It's not just on your armpits. I was at work about six years ago now. It was hot. I was sweating. I was running around. And I sat down in the office and was hit with a scent I had never smelled before, coming from where I believed to be my bikini region. Now, mind you, I had just recently had a rendezvous with a new guy. And so I immediately was like, I have an STD. This is it. I have an STD. So you can only imagine my Google searching words. <laughs> but I got targeted by Lumi whole body deodorant. Impulse purchase, I'm buying it. Deodorant for down there, whatever. Honestly, I used it. I smelled like a freaking toasted coconut. You can apply it everywhere. The first time you ever thought about body odor, like under your arms, it's so normalized. And it makes sense, right? Your arms are down. They don't really get a lot of airflow. Well, what's happening down in that area, huh? There's no airflow throughout your day. Of course, it's going to possibly create some body odor. When I use Lumi out of the shower, it can technically last up to 72 hours, but I've never tested it because I've showered within that time frame. But this lasts all day long. I smell like toasted coconut down there all day long. This stuff was created by an OBGYN because she was sick and tired of the vagine getting all the blame for the odors. And it makes sense. If something smells within that area, you should, you know, be concerned. But when I was able to rule it out, I don't have an STD. I just had body odor. I was like, I'll take it. And here's for the technical stuff. It's aluminum free baking soda free and paraben free. It is pH balanced specifically for use below the belt. So you're good. S skin safe, all of it. And the scents are to die. I love clean tangerine. I have that body wash. Oh my God. So as a special offer for listeners, new customers get $5 off a Lumi starter pack with code she speaks at lumideodorant.com. That equates to over 40% off your starter pack. When you visit Lumi, spelled L-U-M-E, deodorant.com, and use code SHESPEAKS. Designers! Designers! I have spent most of my adult life actively trying to not be pregnant. I cannot count the number of pregnancy tests I've purchased in my day. And it occurred to me, a friend of mine who... We used to do the same thing, tracking our periods. When did we get the period? Oh God, how late are we? And all that stuff. But this year she's in a happy relationship and she would like to try and get pregnant. She used the modern fertility test that I received from this sponsor. And this was months ago now. It's a simple finger prick. You do it all at home. You mail it in with a prepaid label and then you get your personalized results back within like six days. She downloaded those results and took them into her doctor and they were not good, unfortunately. They were not good. The doctor said that my friend would have always had a hard time getting pregnant, even in her like ripe 20s. What if we had actually just done a test to test our fertility, we could have been screwing everything in sight without even worrying about it. So if you think you may want children, maybe, like possibly, modern fertility. The thing about modern fertility is that they understood that the majority of people don't want to go to like a special facility and spend 600 plus dollars to get anything like that tested. You're just like, I'll, I guess I'll never know. But modern fertility is super accessible for everyone. It is a fraction of the cost. 
only $179. And if you go to modernfertility.com slash she speaks, you get $20 off. So it's a fraction of a normal fertility clinic. And also you just get to stay home. You don't have to go anywhere. So you get the results, you can download them and you can take them in to your doctor to discuss further action plans. It's all the same hormones they would test at a clinic. Plus, you can get reimbursed through your FSA or HSA. So give yourself some knowledge about what's happening with your body. Don't focus so much on pregnancy prevention and more about educating yourself on what's going on. Right now, Modern Fertility is offering our listeners $20 off the test when you go to modernfertility.com slash she speaks. That means your test will only cost $159, which is a true fraction of the cost at a fertility clinic. Get $20 off your test when you go to modernfertility.com slash she speaks. Modernfertility.com slash she speaks. Make it work. Make it work. Make it work. Kane tells a story about how he was the awkward kid weighing in at 315 pounds. I've been trying to put my finger on the energy that I get from Kane, and now I get it. Uh, it's that, you know? It's, it's that experience of being an outcast and having to kind of come through that, and that's the vibe. During the model fitting, I love how much the designers love the models. I love how much they all get along and they're excited to see each other. That we didn't get that in the early, 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 early seasons, but it's definitely started to change pretty quickly. All the blue team model, all the blue team uh, models, they stand together. And Christian is like, they're all different restaurants right now. I wouldn't say he's incorrect um, at all. And I'm, it's, it's just crazy to me how their creative brains work. Cause I'm looking at it going, they're never going to fix it. But Laurent's, starts getting like creative genius moments and she goes to Kato, what if you switch the green to the orange and Kato's like okay yeah and then Laurent suggests Bishmi finish the look that he's got with a leather trim instead of what he was going to do which was a fine stitching and the leather is going to tie into Praje and also hers because they've got the leather like hello and Kato's confessional, she goes, Laurence is the woman king, okay? We all know that we are a gift to each other, which is why no one's like, I'm the leader, I'm in charge. It's like, uh-uh, she is saying, it's just, it's just great. It's like, it's, I, I could watch it for hours. I could watch Laurence lead this team and make more 90s clothes for a whole season, honestly. It was really great TV. It's like why you love watching these shows, you know? The red team looks a hot ass mess. A hot ass mess. Like Kane is not even ready. And it's just plaid and black and lace. And as Praje calls it, it looks like a Broadway play. It does. Bishmi is done and he is already offering Praje some help, which Another thing I love, that happens on Top Chef sometimes too, where they actually do end up having time to help each other. And I'm just, I, I love it. I love when competitors see that it's about the teamwork and it's about holding each other up, you know? They have a cute pizza party where they're taking Polaroid pictures. And Coteau's giving a ton of phone bits. And I don't see Brittany giving her all the life like she did Christian. I just... Whatever. I'm moving on. I'm not going to harp on that too much, but that's just my observation. The next day in the workroom, Laurence did the epic black cone leather bra, and it is so fucking cool. And so, oh, it's just so now, like, killer. Christian asks Bishmi, because Bishmi's sewing something. He's like, what are you working on, all bitchy? And he's like, I'm helping Raje with the pockets on his pants. And Christian, yours is perfect? I didn't like that tone. And Bishmi goes, I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't think it was. And he's like, okay, just checking. It's like, you don't have to ask it like that. You know? Maybe this is like triggering for me because I've had bitchy managers in my life or, you know, bitchy bosses and had to, and it's just like, why do you got to talk to me like that? It's kind of condescending. Praje puts 43 
on his design to bring awareness to the 43rd president of Haiti being assassinated a year ago and nothing has been done. And I Googled that shit and I was like, damn, that's cool. But like, not cool that he was assassinated, but cool that, cool that Praje is working it in like that. Kane is so behind and has to make the shirt and the skirt. And when he shows it to Christian, he is like, I didn't mean to make a cape. It's supposed to just be like a cool detail on the shirt. And Christian's like, it's a lot of look. Basically, you're going to be going home. They do it. They do the runway show at the First Ward School. And Anna is going braless today. She walks in and I could not focus on anything but her beautiful boobs bounce in braless in her like dress or like flowy dress. Um, the the judges though, the judges are already seated and then the designers come in and Brandon's like, whoa, I'm actually having PTSD. Like he was like, I, this, I wasn't ready for this. I don't like it. <laughs> Bishmi's is first out and it looks hot. It fits this curvy queen so perfectly. Rami's is not by any means bad. He does this like really lightweight, wide leg, cargo pant, white with a halter top. Uh, it's definitely the weakest of all of the designs. Well, well, I don't know. I didn't love Coteau's. Praje's model, though, comes out with the jacket and the sweatpants and the orange beanie. And the sweatpants have the, like, as they later call them, trapper keeper pockets that are removable or something. And I was just obsessed. I was, it's like the, everything about it, the styling, all of it. Oops. Um, the Ronces, though, is so good that Nina, Nina even goes, yes, that's how good it is. That's a huge thing. We rarely get reactions from the judges, so we don't know until they do, you know, the deliberations and stuff, but so good. The green overalls, black cone bra, the orange shawl, I don't know what that is. But Coteau's big jacket, it's like the model is just kind of being swallowed by it. That was my only thing, is it just looked like a lot of fabric, um, and I didn't get to see enough dimension on it. It might have looked cooler in person. That's very, very possible. Between the sets, uh, the designers are like screaming and going crazy, especially Anna. And Brandon remains like super triggered. Brandon's like, what did they eat this morning? Like he's trying to make a joke out of it, but I could tell he's like, I need to get out of these halls. I cannot be here anymore. Anna's design. I didn't get why it was so great. It was like this super flare pant and high neck lace shawl. And I was like, is this a 90s? I didn't really get any. I mean, I don't know. I didn't really think. I thought it was more like 70s. Brittany's design is a mess. And she did the same like grommet pants thing that she did with the other one. But this is with pleather and with plaid. And it is just a lot going on. The space buns, like, oh, it's way too, it needed some major editing. Canes, though. Huh? The piece of fabric that looks like it's a plaid shirt that's tied, but it's not. It's just a piece of fabric. It's a, it, it looks like a costume. It looks like a costume. Fabio's is cool. It's like a, he makes like a shirt backpack thing. Um, and his, it's funny though, because they use his confessional for a voiceover to explain it. And it's, it's clearly in response to what the judges will eventually say. And he goes, I couldn't have pers pushed it further. I made it sexy. I made a shirt that's a backpack, which will be a big seller for me. And he, Fabio is not loving the judges. He is feeling, he's pissed at them. I'll tell you that. By the way, guys, I'm so sorry if you hear my air conditioner so loud in the background. I recorded Orange County right before this and I had it off and I literally was dying because it's so hot here in LA right now. So I apologize that if it's, if it's super annoying and you can hear it, I'm going to do my best to take it out, but it is, it's bugging me. Like I can't even hear it in my, in my headphones. Um, Carson's is dope. It's so hot that as Nina's looking at it, she's like fabulous. Like she meant that fabulous. She was just like, she doesn't say fabulous for nothing. Like me, I say fabulous about everything. She says fabulous like twice a year. And when she said, and she meant it. It's cool. It's like this, 
it has like a black lace top halter type of dress on top. It's so sexy with this dope puffer jacket. Oh, it's killer. Nina is so excited and it is such a nice change from last week where she was like, well, you've all become drapers and minimalists. I was like, jeez. But so it's nice that she's excited. Okay, now we are judging. We are at the runway. The blue team wins and Brittany immediately goes, oh, fuck, because she knows. The top looks, Laurence, Bishmi, and Praje. Couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. They do say, though, on, uh, Nina does say, like, Carson, I loved your look. Your look was one of my favorites. You're just on the losing team, unfortunately. The low scores are Brittany, Kane, and Fabio. And I was kind of surprised by Fabio, honestly. I really was. Okay, Bishmi talks about his look and says, my favorite part on a woman, even though I'm gay, is her collarbone. And I love Brandon not knowing he was gay. I love Brandon going, I did not know you were gay. And Bishmi just goes, you didn't? <laughs> He's so cute. And Brandon goes, mm, me too. Loved it. Love this little moment. The number on her arm is the age of his sister when she passed. And Elaine says, her spirit really came through. And I got choked up. I got really choked up. I like Elaine a lot. Elaine's a really, oops. She's a very sweet, neutral judge. Kind. I like her a lot. Praje's design. Um, I love the debate over the pockets. Nina does not like them, obviously, but the rest are like, I fucking dig them. They're cool. They're not distracting. And here's Praje's reason for why. He's like, the 90s were like, I don't give up. So so what if my pockets are flapping? Mind your business. <laughs> the judges are like, okay, fine. You, you win there. Um, the top under the jacket is also so unexpected. It's like this, I can't, I don't know what the style of that is called, but it's like, you know, it, it's chic and you took the jacket off and now she's got like a chic outfit to like go out in. It was awesome. Laurence's design, just amazing. Jenny says that Mimi looks like a bad bitch. And I think Elaine is like, I just love that you had Jenny Garth saying bad bitch. Um, Nina is so obsessed with it. She's like, it doesn't look retro. It looks like the future. Power. Fucking power. Kane's design. Mm -hmm. The more I look at it, the worse it got. Like, the more I looked at it, I was like, now literally, what is this? It's crazy. Um, he seems like a salesman when he's pitching the story. And I also don't like when a designer says something like, I'm an evening wear designer. So basically, don't, you can't count this. And he goes, and I was 35 pounds when I was younger, and or 315 pounds when I was younger, and blah, 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 blah. It's like, it's very, like, insecure, because he, he knows, but it's also a little defensive. Not the best. Brandon says it perfectly. He goes, look, I went through a bad girl phase, and I based a collection I did off of that phase, and... I hate looking at it because it just isn't my brand. And this looks like a good girl trying to be bad. And I was like, he has your number, Kane. Called it perfectly. Britney's design looks like a costume because of the pleather. It's just costume. And thank you, Jenny, for pointing out that these space buns and how they are just extreme Fabio's design. I could tell that the other judges were like, I think this just has to be in the bottom because like the other scores were higher, but it's really not like Nina calls it safe. She goes, it's a little safe, you know? And Fabio goes, no, I don't, Nina. <laughs> then Nina goes, well, I'm telling you. She don't miss a beat. She goes, you can try it all you want, honey. I am Nina Garcia. Okay. I do whatever the fuck I need to do to get this shit done around here. But Fabio's story was that he was inspired by, like, Angelina Jolie and hackers, and that's why the backpack is there. And Elaine and Jenny are digging it. Brandon likes it, too. So he's not going home, which is good, because I was like, you guys suck. Like, this isn't the worst design. The winner is Laurence. She so deserved it. And out is Kane. And he couldn't be more of a class act. 
And Nina really means it. She goes, Kane, I'm going to miss you. She, I could tell she meant that. And Brittany cries and Kane's like, stop it. You're going to make me cry. That was the worst accent. Sorry. Um, but Kane says, he goes, look, I am definitely going to go home and I'm going to digest everything you said. You know, maybe it'll take me 10 years because you know what? Last time it took me a while to appreciate the refined editor critiques from you, Nina. And she just gives him like a little wink. She's like, that's right. I'm a genius. Um, Kane is sitting with everyone and out comes Christian. Like, I'm so sorry, Kane, you got to go. But, you know, don't forget, like, you won the first challenge, $10,000. And Kane's like, I did. When does that come in, by the way? <laughs> Without missing a beat, so quick. And he gives this really cute speech to the younger designers for being such good sewers and how impressed he is with them. And he packs up and it's so sweet. And his final line is, going out with grace is the way to go. That's how Dolly would do it. Get out of here. Get out of here with your cute self. God. I love this show so much. So today I went to my sister's bridal party and we had to do um, a toilet paper dress. And it wasn't just me. I was like, okay, I've been watching on a project runway. I have an idea. I blame the other people in my group for ruining the execution. It was horrendous execution. I would have not done what they did. But the other team that won did this cute off the shoulder, one shoulder dress. Like that was like a mini. It was so cute with like a little, it was fabulous. Huge project runway fans as well. I was like, it's spreading and everyone loves this season. It's so, so fucking good. Anyway, I hope you guys are loving this as much as I am. I think this is now, right, right now, my favorite show to cover. It's just easy. It's nice to just talk about, like, talent and skills as opposed to just, like, personality drama, you know? So good. It's such a breath of fresh air, you know? Anyway, I love you guys, and I will see you next time. Hopefully you tune in for the Atlanta episode because we are finally coming back. Kendrick and I, it's been two weeks. Couldn't get it done this past week because neither of our schedules coordinated. So we'll be doubling up and it should be good. All right. I love you. Mean it. Mwah. Bye. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. If you did, would you mind leaving me a five-star rating and review on whatever platform you are listening? If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget there's the super thanks option down at the bottom, the little button with the dollar sign and the heart. And also I'm on buymeacoffee.com slash she speaks bravo if you want to buy me a little coffee or two or five. And my Patreon, that is where I'm covering all of the classic Bravo jams. If you want to follow me over there and subscribe, link is in the description. And follow me on Instagram and TikTok at She Speaks Bravo. And whoever the guest was for today, all their information is always in the episode description. So if you want to follow them and check them out, check there for the info. And any of the sponsor codes that I mentioned in this episode will also be in the description. I love you guys. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. And I'll see you next time. Bye.